Old Hollywood is celebrated as this picture-perfect time of some of the most iconic imagery in all of film and pop culture, and that it was. But it was not without its own era of chaos. Let's explore. When you think of the golden age of Hollywood, the first name that comes to mind is Marilyn Monroe for most people. There is also a famous affair that follows that thought. Marilyn Monroe and JFK's relationship was one of the best worst kept secrets in Hollywood beside the casting couch that continued her stardom. She was also involved with President Kennedy's brother, Robert Kennedy. Some of these things we're uncovering right now will move from uh, speculation to fact as, as time progresses. Monroe, aware her career was fading, thought Kennedy would marry her. Can't you just see me as first lady, she told a friend. Anderson says Monroe even called Jackie and told her of JFK's promise to marry her. Jackie was unfazed. Marilyn, you'll marry Jack, that's great, and you'll move into the White House and you'll assume the responsibilities of First Lady, and I'll move out and you'll have all the problems. Dr. Greenson took the secret of Marilyn Monroe's death to his grave. In a taped phone conversation, he told of the terrible burden he had carried. I can't explain myself or defend myself without revealing things that I don't want to reveal. I feel like I can't, you know, you can't go around and say, well, I'll tell you this and I won't tell you that. It's terrible to have to say I can't talk about it because I can't tell the whole story. But he did give one tantalizing clue. Listen, you know, talk to Bobby Kennedy. We know about tragic child stars like Judy Garland and the ones who narrowly escaped abuse like Shirley Temple, but what about Mickey Rooney? He was one of the premier faces of young Hollywood in his time, and his image juxtaposed with his actions was very disappointing to say the least. And it's not even the yellow face in Breakfast at Tiffany's, it's his liaison with an underage Elizabeth Taylor who was 14 years old at the time. His then wife walked in on them together. Rooney is not the only old Hollywood icon that liked girls inappropriately young. Charlie Chaplin, at the age of 29, when 16-year-old actress Mildred Harris because he thought she was pregnant with his child. The silent film actor would leave people speechless if that happened today. Alfred Hitchcock is lauded as a pioneer of film, but his avant-garde demeanor did not always make for a just one. Tippi Hendren, star of Marnie and the Birds, revealed that Hitchcock allegedly made inappropriate advances toward her. I don't know what to call it. It was something I'd never experienced before. It wasn't love. When you love someone, you treat them well. We are dealing with a mind here that is incomprehensible, and I certainly am not capable of discerning what was going through his mind or why. I certainly gave no indication that I was ever interested in a relationship with him. He became obsessed and aggravated at the fact that she refused him. The hubris of powerful men in Hollywood is as old as the industry itself. In fact, on the set of The Birds, Hendren suffered several cuts to the face from real birds being used on set that were originally supposed to be stuffed props. Walt Disney is a name that has all but become synonymous with family entertainment. However, he couldn't have been anything but when he invited Nazi propaganda filmmaker Lenny Riefenstahl the day after Christian Stolt, also known as the Night of Broken Glass. It was a Nazi act of terrorism against synagogues, the homes of Jews, and Jewish-run businesses. The act was a real slap in the face to the plight of the Jews as some of them were even offed the night of and lost their lives in fear. We often find the best depictions of people long after they pass does not always match their actions in their lived life. And Disney is one of them. Fat, funny men in Hollywood are as old as the industry itself. However, manslaughter is older than both and not too far removed from the old Hollywood lore, unfortunately. Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle attacked unknown actress Virginia Rapp and ended up taking her life in the process. He was charged with manslaughter and cleared after just three trials. Lana Turner is one of the most gorgeous women of old Hollywood and behind that beauty was a dark, dark secret. She was dating mobster Johnny Stampanato and the relationship turned violent. In 1958, Lana Turner's daughter, 14-year-old Cheryl Crane, stabbed Stampanato, ending his life. Several people thought Turner did it herself and pinned it on her underage daughter to save both her career and possibly push for the angle of her being a minor so everyone could get off and be done with an abusive mobster. The courts ruled it a justifiable homicide. I would be remiss if I didn't revisit a staple on this channel, the tragic child star that is Judy Garland. Since the very beginning, my fascination with the dark side of her technicolor image drove me to research, dissect, and present pop culture through cinematic documentaries. 
The imagery alone is iconic just for aesthetic purposes and visual art, but that legend of how a star is truly born is just too daunting and intriguing to skip over. Aside the strict diet and stage mother, the MGM treatment of child stars was not just relegated to Garland. Shirley Temple had a producer expose himself to her when she was just 12 years old. She laughed it off. When I left Fox, I went to MGM for one picture, thank goodness, only one. And when I got there with my mother, we were separated. She went into the office of Louis B. Mayer, and I went into the office of Arthur Freed. And he was going to talk to me about a, a movie he wanted to put me in. I'm 12 years old, you know. And I thought he was a producer, but instead he was an exhibitor. And I'd never seen anyone naked before, except myself. So I had no clue about what was happening. And um, so it struck me so funny, I laughed at him. And I laughed uproariously. I had tears, you know. And he got infuriated. And he said, out, 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 go. Did so you I, tell your mother? Well, I went down, I was very quiet. I went down and met her in the lobby of the administration building. She came up very quietly from Louis B. Mayer's office. And we walked hand in hand silently to the car, which was unusual. We got in the car driving home. I said, Mom, you won't believe what happened to me. And I told her what happened and she got kind of quiet. And she said, well, you don't know what happened to me. <laughs> and Louis, Louis B. Mayer wasn't as bad as, as Freed was to me. Did he try but to? He came on to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and so we both decided that we didn't like MGM much. It was, you know, it was better at Fox. <laughs> we don't. There was also a black box punishment where children were put in ice boxes when they misbehaved. Romanticizing the past for nostalgia or any other reason usually leads us to forget how bad things really were. It's a purely emotional, a historical approach to whitewashing the darkest events imaginable from our past. And in the case of old Hollywood, it's surely done for good reason. Not every spotlight can outshine the darkness, even in front of a cheering crowd. It was, yeah, shortly after that, I met Marilyn at a party at Gene Kelly's house, and I was playing in this role in the girl in the red velvet swing and she said that she was considered but she was too old it was another one of those ageist things and then she told me she said watch out for the wolves in hollywood honey and i said well i've been in british films for three years i can handle wolves and she said well not the power buses honey and she said if they don't get what they want they'll drop your contract subscribe to join the u universe she told me that i was only Nuts to that goddamn line. I cannot remember it. But I didn't die, and I haven't stayed away, and I want that child. Well, you're not going to have it, you son of a bitch. That Black Caesar's rock? How do you know? Well, for one who's never been here, I know a lot about these keys. They were a favorite subject with George. Well, he used to dig for buried treasure right over on that island. Goddamn my soul.